Doppler broadening of spectral lines. A gas of atoms, each of mass m, is maintained at the absolute temperature T inside an enclosure. The atoms emit light which passes in the x-direction through a window of the enclosure and can then be observed as a spectral line in a spectroscope. A stationary atom would emit light at the sharply defined frequency omega uh, nu zero. But because of the Doppler effect, the frequency of the light observed from an atom having an x component of velocity vx is not simply equal to the frequency nu zero, but is approximately given by nu equals nu zero one plus vx over c, where c is the velocity of light. As a result, not all of the light arriving at the spectroscope is at the frequency nu zero. Instead, it is characterized by some intensity distribution, giving the fraction of light intensity lying in the frequency range between nu and nu plus d nu. Calculate the mean frequency of the light observed in the spectroscope. Now, uh, it is mentioned that the frequency observed will be given by nu is equal to nu zero one plus uh, vx over c so if i want to calculate the mean frequency then i have to take the mean value of this equation so uh, this is going to be equal to nu zero uh, times because nu zero is a constant, a constant will come out uh, one plus the mean value of vx divided by c and because uh, vx is going to have a mean value of zero um, so the atoms are equally likely to move in plus x and minus x direction because we have a symmetric probability distribution the mean value will be zero so we will find that new bar will be equal to new zero because the parentheses will give us a one so the answer is new zero so we're going to observe the mean frequency that we observe will be the a frequency that would be normally due to stationary atoms. Now let's move on to part B. Uh, calculate the dispersion in the frequency of the light observed in the spectroscope. The dispersion of the light delta nu uh, square bar will be equal to nu minus nu bar uh, square bar and as we have seen before this is uh, nu square bar minus nu bar squared so we have shown this many times before now uh, as for uh, nu bar we have already nu zero what I need to know is nu square bar so let's take a look at uh, new square. New square will be new zero square one plus two vx over c plus vx square over c square. So when I take the average value of uh, this equation, I will find that I will have new zero square. 1 plus 2 vx bar over c plus vx square over c square vx square bar over c square now vx bar we have argued that is equal to zero so this is going to give us a zero here and what about vx square bar well using equipartition uh, theorem We have 1 over 2 mvx square 
r is equal to 1 over 2 kt so the twos will cancel and we find that vx square has an average value kt divided by m so we can substitute that into this equation so we will find that nu square bar is nu zero square one plus uh, kt over m c square therefore for the dispersion delta nu square bar we will have nu square bar which is nu zero square plus nu zero square kt over m c square minus nu bar square which is nu zero square so these two would cancel and the answer would be the dispersion of the frequency uh, delta nu square bar is nu zero square kt divided by m c square let's move on to part c show how measurements of the width the standard deviation of a of the frequency of a spectral line observed in the light coming from a star allow one to determine the temperature of that star well if i look at the uh, standard deviation delta nu delta nu this will be equal to uh, nu zero over c square root kt over m so if i look at the dispersion of the uh, frequency it is proportional to square root t so i find that uh, one can measure the temperature of the distant star from the line width we have uh, nu zero is equal to nu bar that is uh, from the intensity distribution and we know the speed of light uh, and we know the nu zero value specific to an atom from nu zero value specific to an atom uh, m mass of the atom is known so you can see that nu zero is found from the intensity distribution it's the average value of the frequency observed c is the speed of light that's already known k is the Boltzmann constant that's known and m mass of the atom will be determined looking at the value of frequency nu zero which is specific to an atom so we can determine the temperature of the star as the line width is proportional to square root t so this is our uh, recipe to calculate the temperature of a distant star okay so we're looking at the doppler broadening of spectral lines and it is mentioned in the problem statement that a stationary atom would emit light at a sharply defined frequency nu zero but because it has an x component of the velocity vx it's going to have a doppler shifted frequency that is observed by the spectroscope and if you look at the average value of this frequency it is the average value of nu zero times one plus vx over c because the average x component of the velocity is zero the atoms can the atoms are randomly moving so they have equal probability of moving in plus x and minus x direction we find that the average frequency that we observe is the frequency that would be uh, emitted by a stationary atom nu zero the standard deviation uh, the dispersion i can calculate by new square bar minus new bar squared new bar i know is new zero for new square uh, bar i calculate 
uh, new zero square 1 plus 2 vx over c plus vx squared over c squared average value and the vx average value was zero for vx squared average value i can use equipartition theorem which says the uh, kinetic energy 1 over 2 mvx squared average value is 1 over 2 kt and this is per degree of freedom so the x is 1 degree of freedom so it is 1 over 2 kt so vx square average value is kt over m substituting that into this equation and subtracting new bar square which is new zero square we obtain the dispersion new zero square over c square kt over m and we see that the standard deviation which is square root of the dispersion is proportional to square root t so we know new zero from the intensity distribution it's the uh, average value of the frequency where we see uh, a sharp emission uh, and we know the mass of the atom because new zero is specific to an atom we can find its mass so we can calculate the temperature of a distant star based on this information